This is a special presentation brought to you by the DAFMAP based on one of the lectures given by Harav Yohonasan Berger Schlita. Please check out our other videos and shiurim at www.thedafmap.com. Today's shiur begins four lines from the bottom of Daf Nun Gimel Omel Aleph. The Gemara opens with a quote from our Mishnah from Daf Mem Tesom at Beis. And as the more progresses, you'll see it makes a uh, it makes reference or quotes a Mishnah da from Dafnun Dalit Amad Aleph. Oftentimes, you find terms in Mishnayos that have a general or generalized tone to them, and the Gemara wonders what is being alluded to or what's being included by the general statement. So here in our Mishnah Daf Mem Tesum at Beis. It said, "Al elu hanazir megalech." After giving a list of uh, situations or um, items that cause a nazir to lose the uh, lose credit for the days that he counted toward his nazirs because of defilement to the dead, so as we said, a number of of uh, items that are related to the dead, the corpse, were mentioned, and then. It mentions al elu hanazir megalech. On these, the nazir is megalech. So the Gemara asks al elu de reisha lim ute. Uh, maybe we should phrase it not so much asks, but states that the al elu phrase from daf mem tes lim ute etsem kisora to exclude the bone that's the size of a barley grain. The al mago the al maso in the al ahilo lo. In contrast to the other items mentioned in the Mishnah, where con- where defilement and hence loss of the zeros is conveyed through not only contact and carrying, but being in the same room with a common overshadow like a ceiling or tree branches or whatever. The etsem kisora, the bone, the size of a barley grain, very small bone, that will convey tuma and ruin the nazirus counting, but only through touching or masa supporting or carrying, but not through overshadowing. So the etsem kisora is different than the other items in the list in that sense. So that when the Mishnah says on these the Nazir is Megalech, that means that on these things mentioned in the list, there is loss of Nazirs even for overshadowing, as opposed to the case of the Etzem Kisaora. The Mishnah Dafnun Dalid mentions the Al Elu. There are a list of things that in that will cause defilement, tumas mace, but the nausea will not take a haircut. In other words, the nausea will not lose credit for the nazirus days that he has counted. And the, once again, you have this general expression. So what does it come to do? It comes limute even hashuchis. We take a look in the uh, toysfus at the bottom and we can see Three lines from the bottom, the al elu. You can see it squiggle under on in our marked version. The al elu the seifal im ute even hashachos, even hamesach haloretz v'yesh shnei avonim o shlosha yotzim in agoder. You have uh, stones protruding from a fence, two or three stones protruding from a fence. V'tuma tachas tachas mehen, and there is a body that's buried under one of these stones. The over tachas achas mehen v'nudeh imehelu al tumo, and the the nazir passed under one of these, and he doesn't know if the stone that he passed under is a stone that happens to be also overshadowing the grave. So, a case like that, the nazir will not lose uh, his credit for the days of naziris that he observed up till that point. We continue in the Gemara. The chazi kav at somos, a half kav. Kav is a dry measure, so it's a half kav of bones. The Mishnah says a nazir 
will become defiled and lose credit for the days that he has counted. So that if he is in the same room with a Chatzikah Vatzamos, he's under the same overshadow, that will uh, cause him to lose credit. We continue at the top of Omid Bey's Chatsi Kav Atzomos In, Roiva Atzomos Lo. The Mishnah mentioned that the quantity of half a Kav of bones that will result in the Nazir losing Nazir credit. But a quarter Kav of Atzomos, no. It should be pointed out <coughs> that a quarter Kav of bones in general, communicates to Masmes. Our Mishnah features the half kav because that is the amount that will cause a nazir not only to become defiled, but also to lose out on the nazirus that he's counted till that point. Well, Hechi Domi, what are the circumstances that the Mishnah is referring to? The half kav, yes, a rova kav, no. If the bones that make up this measure happen to be a barley grain in size, at least a barley grain in size, simply on the grounds of bone the size of barley grain, there is Nazirus loss. Why? make mention of a, a relatively speaking larger quantity of bones when a mere barley grain size bone will cause the Nazir to lose his Nazirus. Ella, rather the case of the Mishnah when it makes reference to a Chatsi Kavatzomas is the Akmech Akmuchi. The bones have been pulverized into a powdery quality uh, substance. Rashi points out on the third line from the top, the word akmuch comes from the word kemach. Kemach is flour. The bones have been ground down into a fine, powdery substance like flour. There is no bone the size of a barley grain. And the Mishnah reveals the e is bay if there is a collection of bone powder measuring a half kav mitame amagov amaso vi al ahilo there is tuma communicated through contact through supporting and through being under the same overshadowing pochos mechatsi kav less than that amount afilu amago eino mitame lefisha einbo etzem kisora even with contact there will be no tuma communication because you don't have a bone the size of a barley grain. We continue again with a quote from the Mishnah: "Al aver min hames, the al aver min hachai sheish alein bosser karoi, the limb from a corpse or a limb from an amputee. If there is flesh on these limbs, enough so that if they were still attached to a living person." they would recuperate, they would uh, regenerate themselves. So that kind of limb causes a nazir to lose uh, the uh, nazirus that he's counted if he's been in the same room with them. On the side of our Gemara, we have a no say topic heading, Machlokis Rabbi Yochan of Reish we have a dis- disagreement between these two, uh, uh, Rabbonim, Legabi ever minhames o minachai she'ain olel baser karoi. Aim hanazir megalei cholel. Let's say you have a limb that has so little flesh left on it that it wouldn't heal if it were part of a person. Does a limb like that cause a nazir to lose his nazirus? The Gemara. Ain alehem baser karoi mai. And Tosfos adds there is also no bone that's the size of a barley grain. So if you have a limb like that, basically uh, a small amount of flesh, and it doesn't have a one piece of bone the size of a barley grain, what's the din? Rabbi Yochanan Omar, Ein HaNazir Megalech The Nazir does not lose Nazir's credit. 
And Rabbi Yochanan Omar, Hanozir Megalei Chalehem. Rabbi Yochanan Omar, Ein Hanozir Megalei Chalehem. The Hokotoni Bereisha, the opening of part of the Mishnah says, Al Aver Min Hames, the Al Aver Min Achai, Sheyesh Alehen Bosar Karoi, in. If it has the requisite amount of flesh to heal, then that kind of limb will cause the Nazir to lose his Nazirus. Aval Ein Alehem Lo, and we infer. But if it doesn't have enough flesh for recuperation, then no. For Rabbi Shimon ben Lokish Omer, Megaleach. Rish Lokish says, he nevertheless loses. Why? Midalo Kotoni Basefa. Because that scenario is not taught in the next mission, the Seifan Dafnun Dalid, which lists those situations where the Nazir does not lose Credit. So, since the Ein Aleim Karoi is not listed in the Mishnah Daf Nun Dalid, Reish Lokish believes that even if it's Ein Aleim Karoi, the Nazir will lose credit. Rabbi Yochanan Omar, Rabbi Yochanan, in explaining why why this does not appear in the next Mishnah bearing in mind that Rabbi Yochanan holds this is another example of Ein Hanozir Megaleach so why is it in fact not taught in that list he tells you anything that you can derive through inference is simply not taught in the Seifa in our Mishnah Daf Memtes, which lists the items that cause Nazirus loss Example, Aver Shiyeshalem Bosa Karoi. You can on your own infer that if it doesn't have Bosa Karoi, no Nazirus loss. Therefore, no need to teach it explicitly in the next Mishnah. It's self evident. Question. And you can see we have uh, triangles on the side under our Mivne Henning. These triangles are Kushos, Al Shuvas, Rabbi Yochan, Damar Kol Hecha, etc. These are questions on. Rabbi Yochanan's contention that things that can be inferred need not be taught explicitly. Well, let's see. V'ho chatsi kav The Mishnah Daf Mem test mentions half kav of atzomos, Nazir loses credit. The mashma chatsi kav atzomos in rova atzomos lo. You would be able to infer from that a half kav causes loss, a rova, a quarter kav, does not cause loss. They cut Tony Baseva Rova Thomas. And yet the Mishnah Daf Nundalit spells it out. Well it wasn't the case of Rova Thomas figured through inference? The Gemara answers that's different. Hasam regarding uh, the issue of the Rova Kava Thomas, Ilav Rova Atsomas had it not been taught Hava Amino I would have thought Afilu al Mago Valmasolo. If I was left for to infer matters, I would have said as follows The Khatsi Kavat Samos that's responsible for a Nazir losing uh, losing credit. However, a Rova Kav that doesn't do anything. Even Mago and Masolo and, and by the way we explained before that we were dealing with pulverized bones so that you have bone powder a quarter cup well I would have thought even for contact and support it would have no effect therefore it had to be taught for overshadowing so there is no nausea loss but Maga and Masa, there would be Nazir loss. Question. In our Mishnah, things that cause a Nazir to lose credit included the case of a half lug. The lug is a measure, a liquid measure, a half lug of blood. The Shamis Mina, one could have inferred. Chatsi lugdam in revias tamlo, a half lug causes a loss. 
a quarter of a lug does not. The Katanim is Seifah, and yet the Seifah mentions it explicitly, Rabbi Yisdam. But according to Rabbi Yochanan, things that could be inferred need not be taught explicitly. The Gemara answers, the Mishnah had an agenda in featuring the case of Rabbi Yisdam. Hosam lafuke mida Rebbe Akiva. There, the Mishnah wanted to teach a law to the exclusion of Rebbe Akiva's position. Now, in following the Gears of the Gra, we're not going to read the next two lines. We'll pick up with the last word on the next line. But we look in the Teisvis, Hosam lafuke mida Rebbe Akiva. We're looking at Teisvis on the second of the widest lines under the Gemara text. Vahachi pirusha. Lafuke mida Rebbe Akiva, Yom Rebbe Pirkin, Dal Ravias Dam, Dal Mago, the Almasao Megaleach. Rabbi Akiva held, or Rabbi Akiva's opinion is that concerning a quarter lug of a quarter lug of dam, contact or carrying will cause a nozir to lose credit. So the Mishnah wants to say not so. The nozir will not lose credit under those circumstances. Contrary to Rabbi Akiva, we continue. Hi Aver min hames hechi domi. We in presenting this earlier, we uh, explained based on Tosfos's commentary what the circumstances were. But here, the Gemara itself asks, what are the circumstances concerning the Aver min hames that was mentioned above? We have arrows you can see uh, helping you to find what we're referring to. In the is bay etzem kisora, if the <coughs> limb from the corpse that was described above as having bosser karoi, and then we inferred that if it doesn't have bosser karoi, then according to Rabbi Yochanan, the nozir would not lose credit. Well, concerning that limb, e is bay etzem kisor, if it has a bone in it, the size of a barley grain, my time under Rabbi Yochanan, why would Rabbi Yochanan say that the Nazir is not Megaleach uh, even on for, even with uh, regard to Mago and Maso? The Delespe et Kisora, and if it doesn't have a bone the size of a barley grain, my time of the Reish Lakish, then why would Reish Lakish say that the Nazir loses credit? In fact, it doesn't have a bone in it the size of a barley grain. Nevertheless, the Torah includes it. And here we have a Tanaic source that features a, a posuk that's broken down into phrases and darshaned, posuk dealing with Tumas Mace, oil a mace. The tumma conveyed by a mace in terms of overshadowing, where uh, the where a person and the item mentioned are under the same overhang. Before we continue further, it should be pointed out that the Gemara has a long answer for Reish, for the question regarding the opinion of Reish Lakish. Reish Lakish's opinion was that the limb that doesn't have uh, bosar karoi, that does not have etzem kisora, nevertheless, bemaga umasa will cause a nausea to lose credit. In order to see this, we have a long answer marking. Reish Lokish opens with a source that we already introduced dealing with Tumas Mace Ba'oyel. We are not talking about Oyel Atuma, as we emphasized. Only if it has all of Basar Koroi will there be Tuma even Ba'oyel. This Tanaic source features the laws regarding Tumas Oyel. And in the source, reference is made to a limb that has flesh that is Mala Ruka, in which the limb could have uh, recuperated had it still been attached. On the top of Dafnun Dalid, another source will be cited in which you see reference to a limb 
that lacks enough flesh to recuperate. And that source is talking about Maga. So, as far as we are concerned, we're aiming to get to that source. In order to appreciate that source, we'll teach it in contrast with this source that deals with Tumas Ohel. I know that that might sound a little complicated, but it needed to, we needed to say that at the outset so you have, some, uh, you have an overview of what approach the Gemara is taking. So once again, Reish Lakish is insistent that the limb from a corpse uh, or from a, uh, an amputee that has so little flesh on it that it, if still attached... It would not recuperate. And it's a limb, according to Reish Lakish, does, that does not have a bone in it the size of a barley grain. Nevertheless, if a nausea would have contact with it, Maga would cause him to lose his nausea. So where does Reish Lakish see that? So we pick up again from the source regarding Tumas Oihel. The Sanya v'chola shir yigal p'nei hasoda b'chalal cherev o the passage goes on to say, we read, wrote in between the lines, O be'etzim odom o be'kover. And now the passage is broken down. Al p'nei ha'sodet, ze ha'mahil al p'nei ha'meis. That's a reference to uh, death defilement through someone who overshadows a body. Bachalal ze ever ha'nechlal min ha'chai. V'yesh bo l'haloi sa'ruka. The word bachalal is a reference to a limb that was amputated and it has enough flesh that if it were still on the body, it could have recuperated. Cherev hareze kachalal. This is a tangential point for our sugya, but that has to do with a, an item of metal, a metal vessel like a sword. The word cherev literally is a sword which is made of metal. When it comes into contact with a Body, it doesn't drop down one uh, one degree in tuma, which ordinarily happens with items that come into contact with other items that had a higher level of tuma. The sub, the succeeding item drops down one level. Not so with the case of metal. The pasuk says, "O b'meis ze'ever hanechlal min hames." That's a reference to a limb that was removed from a corpse. Obeetsem Odom Ze Rova Atsamos. That's a basket containing a quarter kav of Atsamos that will cause Tumas Mace if one overshadows it. Uh, by the way, this Pusik is talking, as we mentioned earlier, with the rules of overshadowing, not specifically rules regarding a nausea. Uh, there, there will be death defilement for overshadowing a quarter kav of bones. Oba Kever. Ze kever sosum. This is the reference to a sealed grave. Uh, the Gemara continues at the top of Daf Nun Dalid. The Omar Mar Tuma Boikas Ve'ele Boikas Ve'oredes. With regard to a sealed grave, Tuma will penetrate the grave if one overshadows a grave in which there is a body. The Tuma uh, Boikas means pierces upwards. And it can pierce downwards as well, communicating death defilement. The Ilu Gabi Nagia, Oma Rav Yehuda Tanya. With regard to the laws of contact, not overshadowing, but contact, it says, Vial Hanogea Beetsem Obacholo Obacover. Beetsem, again, we're breaking down a posso. Ze Etsem Kisaora, that a bone the size of a barley grain. If you overshadow it, you will not become defiled. If you touch it, you will. O Becholo, again from the Pasuk, Ze Ever Hanechal Menachai, this is a limb that was amputated, and note, the Ein Bo Lahaloi Saruka. And it has so little flesh that even if it remained attached, it would not recuperate. This is in contrast to the source before that dealt with Tumas Oil, there only if it has enough flesh to recuperate. O se ever hanechlal min hames. That's a reference to a limb removed from a corpse. Uh, the Pesach also mentioned O bekover omre shlokish ze kever shilifnei hadibor. That's the reference to a uh, grave of an idol worshipper, uh, which the expression Lifnei Hadibor is discussed in the Rashi at, to some extent, but for our purposes, 
it's a reference to the grave of a um, of an idol worshiper that through contact there is Tumas Mace, but through overshadowing no Tumas Mace. Hi Aver Minhames Hefi Domi. The uh, reference was made to a limb coming from a uh, from a corpse. Uh, also, we made reference to an amputated limb. Uh, what are the circumstances behind it? E the is etsem kisora. If it's a limb that has a bone in it the size of a barley grain, well, hainu hanogeb etsem. That was already alluded to in the pasuk. So you wouldn't need to repeat the same tuma twice. El de les bay etsem kisora. And here we've dashed underline. This is really the main point as far as Reish Lakish is concerned. So we have we are describing a limb from a corpse or an amputation that does not have flesh on it to recuperate and it does not have a bone in it the size of a barley grain. Bafilu hachi rachmona ravye and nevertheless the Torah includes it in the uh, the, the posuk that we saw above o becholol o bemeis v'reb Yochanan o maloch v'reb Yochanan's response because now he disagrees on this point he says that uh, if it, it doesn't have uh, 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 if it if it if it uh, a limb that does not have flesh uh, that's capable of regenerating a nazir would lose credit only if uh, if it has flesh capable of regenerating, but if not, it's uh, it wouldn't affect him even b'maga v'masa. So Rabbi Yochanan tells us the oilam the is bay the limb described above has a bone the size of a barley grain. And you ask, well, isn't that already mentioned in the pasuk when it says be'etzem? If I don't need the drosha on becholol for tuma through contact, teneu inyan lemaso. Allow that phrase to refer to the carrying or the supporting of a limb with a bone barley grain in size. So that as far as Rabbi Yochanan is concerned, you don't have redundancy. Simply the, the posseg be'etzem that was a reference to contact with the bone, a barley grain in size. The phrase o becholol, o bemeis, is a reference to masa, the carrying or supporting a uh, a limb with a bone, a barley grain in size, even without actual contact with it. But if you're holding it, let's say, uh, on a tray, you will also become tome through tomas masa. Umaze b'shlishi u'b'shvi v'soser. The Mishnah said, "Ve'no masu limnois elo ach yitar u'mevi korbanoisov." The nazir, uh, upon losing the nazirus, naturally has to wait uh, three. He has to wait seven days for purification from his defilement to the dead, during which there is maze means the sprinkling of the pora aduma, the red heifer ash water mixture on the third and seventh days during the purification week and he doesn't restart until the Gemara wants to understand the phrase the, the Mishnah that says that the Nozir does not restart until Achitar, literally until purification. Bishvi Ikoi Ad Ovid Herv Shemesh Umoni Rebelezerhi. Does that mean on the seventh day he would restart his counting? Which would be uh, the seventh day after the sprinkling of the Poraduma. Water we mentioned on the third day and seventh day, so here we're on the seventh day, and following that he immerses himself in the mikvah, and this would be in accordance with Rebbe Lezer that says that uh, Nazir is able to 
uh, restart his counting, even though he hasn't brought his sacrifices. The sacrifices that a nausea that became Tome are they're brought on the eighth day, namely the day after the seventh. But if Achi Yitar means on the seventh day, so what do we mean by purification if he hasn't brought his sacrifices yet? So what we mean is he's had the sprinklings of the uh, Poraduma ash water mixture, and he's immersed in the mikvah, and on and then following that, the sun will go down. But prior to that, he's able to restart his counting for the new Nazirus. So that that day seven would also represent day one toward his new Nazirus. That would be in conformity to the opinion of Rebbe Eliezer, who, once again, who says that you don't need to wait. The Nazir doesn't have to wait till he brings his sacrifices. Or, maybe, it's a reference to the eighth day. Umay ash yitar. What does it mean that he doesn't start his counting until purification? Ash yovi korbanoisav. Umani rabonanhi. That would mean until he actually brings his sacrifices. And that would be in conformity to the opinion of the rabonan. The rabonan who are, let's say, more um, restrictive than Rebbe Lezer. So, the question has been raised. Our Mishnah that describes the Nazir restarting his counting, Ash Yitar, uh, is that according to Rebbe Lezer, the seventh day? Or, according to Rabbonan, that the restart is only on the eighth day? Ta Shma, Mitikotoni Seifa, from the fact that the next Mishnah, which refers to a, a nausea, though he uh, though he became defiled, he doesn't bring sacrifices. The Mishnah says Maschil uh, Umoine Miyad. Miyad means immediately. Well, if he became defiled to the dead, so it's true, he doesn't bring sacrifices because the Mishnah Daf Nun Dalid, the next Mishnah, you can see just a few lines from now, this Mishnah lists things that doesn't cause a Nazir to lose credit for. However, he has everything is put on hold because he became defiled to the dead. So he waits a week and it says he's Maschil Miyad. Miyad means immediately on the seventh day after the seven, the week of purification. So, in that Mishnah, Miyad means he starts counting immediately on day seven of the uh, purification week. Ha-Resha, my ad yitar So we could then infer, through contrast, that our Mishnah from Daf Mem Tes, that mentioned ad yitar ad yovi Korbanosov. That he cannot he cannot restart his counting until day eight, and the day on which he would bring the sacrifices for the case of a nazir that defiled himself and loses credit for his previous days. Umani rabbonon he diami nazirus detara at shmini lo And through this, we can then conclude that our Mishnah is a Mishnah taught in accordance with the rabbonon that the new nazirus hopefully, will, that will be observed in purity, the restart doesn't take place until day 8. With that, we conclude our Shior for today. This was a presentation of The Daf Map. We hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe to be informed of our other videos. For resources and more information, please visit our website at www.thedafmap.com.